Hello, everybody. It's me, Rincey. And deep down, I feel nervous, scared, and basically disturbed. The same feelings I've given, you know, a lot of people, I feel them now. Let me tell you why. I did the orientation, new hire documents. They showed me everything, the rules and the safety and security and the ethics, you know. The reason why I feel extremely nervous now is because everything, you know, that is prohibited in these rules, everything that, you know, is a no-no, Everything that is, you know, required or regarded as making people uncomfortable or unsafe or making the environment a hostile, unsafe, uncomfortable environment. Well, basically everything. I've done basically everything like that. I'm taking full responsibility of my actions now. I really didn't care about my bad decisions. I was basing my actions on my emotions instead of using self-control. I didn't care who I was doing wrong to. I didn't care about how I treated others. I felt like I had zero friends. This all started, well, not exactly after we got home from a great summer with Andy's Playhouse, but this was a week later. I saw a picture of my friend Sweet Sixteen I felt like I had no friends, so, and this person that I thought was in the picture, I thought he was going to, he was in this camp, and I literally thought that he was no longer going to be my friend, so the fear, you know, turned into envy and jealousy, and then turned into anger, and then turned into anger with other people and how I've treated other people and then retaliation turned into a bad cycle. Even kept things going on at home, you know? And I realized that that's a no-no. And I forgot the seriousness of, you know, things like that. I forgot the seriousness and how the disrespect, you know, there are consequences for disrespect. And started acting like it was all a, that life was all a big episode of the Proud family. I was constantly running my mouth, talking back. And I go to church. I. I actually started going to Rainfire Church, you know. Well, not until, you know, the following Sunday. But after I saw the pictures. But um, I wasn't listening. I didn't care about no meaning no. And I didn't care to stop when being told to stop. I didn't care that my behavior was making other people around me feel disrespected, uncomfortable, and unsafe. I didn't care that I was being disrespectful and rude. But I take full responsibility. And I could come up with a lame excuse like people make mistakes, but it was a history of it. It was consistent.
And I have to be honest with you, deep down, I felt like doing what Quadrique did. Sometimes I still feel like that. If you don't know who Quadrique is, Quadrique was my friend, cousin of, you know, my designer, my hairstylist, T at the time, Teddy Pretlow. But um, he was my friend. And I wish that he had reached out, you know? And that's what I was trying to do. I was actually, I didn't care that no one wanted to hear it. I just was trying to reach out, you know? in order to, because I felt like that was the alternative to what Quadrick was doing, you know? What Quadrick did the night he came home, you know? So, so, I didn't realize now the seriousness of my actions, but I take responsibility for him, you know? I can't blame my sister. I can't blame my brothers. Everyone else behaved and got themselves together. We all know better than what I did, but I didn't care. Deep down, I felt like I had no friends and basing my emotions on. But I didn't tell people the real reason, you know, and the real reason is that I felt like doing what Quadrique did, I don't like to talk about it, so maybe that's why I didn't tell people, you know, and, you know, and it sucks, what he did, you know, that is, you know, that is one of the sins in the Bible, you know, I don't want to talk about that, I don't want to do that, I go to church, and at that time, you know, we, you know, stopped going to cathedral at the time of the party, the pictures, you know. So that following Sunday, August 24, 2014, I started going to Maranatha Church in Atlanta, well, Chicago, virtually, well, Rainfire Church. I started streaming Rainfire Church. First, I started the calls and, you know, I was really trying to reach out to, you know, the people around me, you know. I was really trying to reach out to them, you know, because deep down I really felt lonely. And they were all saying, you got plenty of friends, but I wasn't listening. I wasn't listening to my mama and my pops. And I've hit so many walls, you know, behind my bad behavior, you know. You know, I really, you know, realized I'm too old to keep playing with fire and not using self-control like life is a game, like life is an episode of The Proud Family. This is not television, you know? I know the consequences and I'm, I'm too old to have conducted myself the way that I did, you know, and carry on the way that I did. But it even cost me, you know, in November when, you know, I was told not to say anything about grandma's death but I said it anyway. I was told not to. I got kicked out of the house, you know, only until lunchtime. But it was supposed to be until 9 p.m. I got kicked out the whole time that my mama had a meeting. My pops kicked me out, you know, so I could think about what I did. No phone, no key. Just remember until lunchtime. Um, yeah, that's my neighbor right behind me. Um, but I realized I was not raised that way. And also, I was looking on the people's phones, you know. I felt really also insecure at the time, you know. I, you know, zero discipline and also, I didn't tell people the real reason, you know, I was saying all this is because I didn't want to get rushed to a hospital. I don't have time to be rushed to a hospital, you know, 
But I realize life is not this whole proud family episode. I go to church, I realize the consequences of my choices. And I accept full responsibility. I'm not deaf and I'm not brief. I copied from television, that's what makes us different, you know. But, you know, I'll only call, you know, on special occasions, you know. I also learned a hard head makes for a soft bottom. When you're told to stop, you stop, you know, no means no. And the relationships and friendships, you know, that I messed up, I pray for these people. They still have a place in my heart, but I've let them go, you know. I'm on to, you know, doing my best at this job, doing what I'm told, listening.